Welcome back. In the last few videos, we talked about tries as a data structure. <clears throat> now I want to extend this concept and talk about what are known as binary tries. So just a quick review, the try is a multi-way tree that is typically used to create a set or a map on strings. And the way it works is every level of the tree, you have multiple children of the the first level, you're looking at the first character in a string. The second level, you're looking at the second character of a string. And the branching factor can be as large as whatever alphabet it is that, that your strings are made out of. That data structure is good for sets or maps where the key value is a string. The concept of a binary try is interesting in part because it's not a set or a map. The binary try instead is going to be a sequence. And indeed, in the Scala language, the vector type, which is one of the uh, kind of standard uh, data structures in, in Scala if, for immutable sequences, is a binary try, is implemented as a, as a binary try. So for example, we can declare a vector in this way. Of, and there are some operations that are efficient on these and there are some operations that are not so efficient. And so we're mainly going to focus on the efficient ones and we'll talk about how this winds up being a try. But for example, I want to be able to uh, add to the end. So we should be able to add to the end of our vector. The thing, because it is immutable, our original version is still here intact. Uh, this did not change it, it just created a new one. Um, and so that is one of the properties that we want to have. Uh, turns out it's also fairly efficient, see, uh, fairly efficient to uh, set a value inside of it, so to update one of them, uh, v2.updated on, uh, let's go to seven. So I took index two and updated it to be a seven, uh, but my v2 is still the same. Uh, this created a, a new vector. So I wanna be able to append to the end, I wanna be able to set values, and we want to be able to get values. And we want those to be very fast operations because those are the things that you often do the most with sequences. This is not a good data structure for inserting or removing, and we can see why uh, as we get further into it. So the thing is, the try itself, once again, was on strings. So we would have a string. We used it for things like a dictionary where we had words like apple, and we checked to see if it's in there. And once again, the try branches out on the A and then P, P, L, E. But a sequence uses indices. So when I want to get something out of V2, I do something like index two, uh, and that's an integer, not necessarily a string. But in a certain sense, all of our integers are strings uh, in that we can break them up. Now, we normally look at numeric numbers. So for example, the number uh, 185, okay? When we look at this, yes, it's, it's an integer, but it has three different digits in it. And so in some ways we can think of it as a string and we could treat it as one character at a time. Uh, and we could build a try this way by saying, well, if we have a certain number of, of digits, we could store these things in a try. And technically we could do that with our, uh, our set and map operations. But of course the computer doesn't store things in decimal. We see this as a decimal string, but the way the computer stores it is as in a binary format. And we can uh, we can get that representation in Scala with the two binary string method. And so in the case of 185, you can see here it's 10111001. You could actually use this as this type of uh, formulation as a uh, as a string in order to go through the the try in which case then your tree would be a binary tree because you'd only have characters of zeros and ones and and we'd branch 
uh, you know, in factors of two at each level. To be more efficient, though, we have a we do use the property of the triad that we have a much higher branching factor. So instead of treating this as a string of individual binary values, we tend to group them. And in uh, Scala's vector, they group in groups of five. Uh, for explanatory purposes and whatnot, I will group in groups of, of four. Uh, though for pictures, I will actually group them only in twos. So you can think of that string If we were to group it into, say, groups of four, it is two characters, okay? This one, zero, one, one, and one, zero, zero, one. Now, it turns out that when you take binary and you represent it that way, uh, in, in groups of four, these are hexadecimal digits. So four binary digits, uh, two to the fourth is 16, and these can be converted to hex, and we can actually see The hexadecimal representation of this, which is B9, uh, has a much higher branching factor when we when we represent it this way, um, and so in some ways the operations will be will be faster because we'll have fewer levels in our tree. But converting it to a string is an inefficient operation, and so instead of ever converting these things to strings, what we do instead is we're going to do bitwise operations on them. So that B9, um, in order to get those values without converting it to a string, I need to be able to pull off certain sets of bits. So for example, I would need to be able to pull off the lowest four bits in here. I would also then need to be able to pull off the next four bits up and the next four bits up. Uh, and we can do that by combining some, uh, some of these bitwise operations. So you've seen the AND operator as a logical operator, turns out that it can also be a bitwise operator. And so our 185, actually I'll do this first as decimal, 185, instead of doing AND, because that AND works on Booleans, if we put a single ampersand in there, this is a bitwise AND, and what I want to uh, AND this with 0xf, so f is 15, and in binary it is 1111. So what the AND does is it takes every bit in your number and uh, does an AND operation between them. When you, in this particular usage, this is referred to as bit masking, because this has these four bits on here, Everything that is a higher level bit is going to be turned off. And indeed, you can see we got the nine, uh, which is that digit right there. It is the lowest digit in hexadecimal. Well, how would I get the B? Um, well, we could pull off just those bits if we did something like this, uh, but they're kind of in the wrong position uh, the B is actually 11 when you convert it to decimal, and this is 11 times 16, which isn't quite what we wanted. Instead, what we want to do is we want to move the bits down. So I want to take all the bits that are in this string, and I want to push them to the right here by four spaces. Okay, This is referred to as a downshift or a right shift. And in C family languages, that is represented by the greater than, greater than. You can also upshift with a less than, less than. And so 185 downshifted by four gives me 11. And as I just said a minute ago, 11 happens to be the uh, B in hexadecimal. So you can see how we can treat any integer, the integer that we want to use as our index, we can treat that as a, uh, as a string of sub bits inside of here. And these operations, because we're not actually going to a real string, are actually very fast operations. They're built into the hardware of the computer. 
And so we're going to use these operations and this concept to pull off individual bits from a number and, and use that to index into a sequence that we build up as a tree. So that kind of gives an introduction to the concept. We'll come back in the next video and we'll start drawing pictures of, of what these looks, look like and see what happens as we add to them.